Internet Explorer 4 through 8. This is um, my kind of educating you guys on what you're missing because, like, I can't stand it when people complain on the IE blog. And I'm going to demonstrate why you can visit my website and see all everything I'm talking about. It's there. It's, you know, so as long as I'm not updating the site at the very moment you visit, you'll be able to see it just fine. So, um, there are two things that annoy me greatly. Uh, on the Microsoft side, they tell us all this stuff, and even Bill Gates said, it's not a big secret what we're doing on Internet Explorer 8. But they don't do themselves justice by posting what they're doing on the IE blog. They've, they've had conferences, I've seen videos, I've seen Chris Wilson himself standing in front of a bunch of people talking about what they're doing. Let's not forget, Microsoft's in it for businesses. Individuals like you and me, yeah, we're not there. So, cut the IE team a break. It's Microsoft, the people who are telling the IE team what to do, that you guys should be giving some tell to. Um, in our Explorer 8, what can we expect? A new rendering engine. Trust me, it came from the lips of the people at Microsoft. <laughs> it's it's well known. I mean, if you actually do the research. The IE blog is not the only source of information coming out of Microsoft, and I'm not talking about leaks. In our Explorer 4, released September 1997, its rendering engine is actually, for its time, absolutely freaking amazing. It supports pure liquid CSS1, meaning your, let's say you have a two-column layout, very basic, you have your main content the sidebar. Pure liquid CSS is this simple. Your parent container only has a float and a width attribute. Anything else is on the child. So, for example, the quote-unquote padding would actually be the margin of the child element. This works consistently in an Explorer 4, Gecko 1.8, Gecko 1.9, Safari, Opera 9.5, Conqueror, whatever you throw at it, it'll work, okay? Just most people don't really approach CSS in that, in that manner, and that's understandable. Anyway, so I'm going to show you guys some quick stuff here with different versions of Internet Explorer. We're going to go through uh, Internet Explorer 4 first. Yeah, here we go. This is Internet Explorer 4. Go to Help About. Woo. Internet Explorer 4. Here we go. All right. So I fixed this up. There's a secondary style sheet. There, conditional comments are not supported here. Okay. I'm going to try not to move the camera around because I know it's going to blur like hell. Okay. So I'm just going to click. I'm going to put the mouse over here, and I'm going to tab. So you guys can see. There we go. So I got a tab here. And uh, so if I just tab to the forums menu, you guys can say hi to uh, that's Lulu there. So anyway, so we got forums, we got fiction. So if I just press tab, it's going to go over there. If I press any key besides tab, my menus are keyboard accessible to any part of the menus. And of course, I have a little script that when it goes to the very end, it closes that menu. Internet Explorer 4, keyboard accessible. Safari 3, more than 10 years later, still can't do it. Okay, so this best browser thing, you gotta drop it because it, it depends on what the heck you're talking about. A professional web designer, and this is the one thing I do know what I'm talking about. Of course, we don't have um, uh, AJAX support here, so when I uh, open up a prompt here, this is what I call layers instead of pop-ups, I actually have an HTTP uh, query here, prompt, and that's I open up a new page, but I can close it without opening a new page. Okay, Internet Explorer 5. Now, I haven't spent as much time cleaning up Internet Explorer 5, and as you can see, the main issue here are the... Um, the form elements, these are actually each, the labels and the uh, inputs are in their own divs and they're floating. This, again, pure CSS, uh, liquid CSS. It's just that Inner Explorer doesn't want to handle it. That's 5.0, 5.5, 6.0. I'm using pretty much the same exact uh, patch uh, secondary style sheet 
Um, and of course, conditional comments are supported in Internet Explorer 5.0 and greater. 5.0, I mean. And then Internet Explorer 7. Now I'm going to disable the CSS, the secondary style sheet, which in for Internet Explorer is conditional comments. I can either go to uh, CSS patch here, or I can go to the site options at the top and go to CSS patch and disable it. And when I do, it's missing. I got no more sidebar. So here we go. I got a little note for you in Internet Explorer, browser patch disabled. Let's turn it back on. And of course I have a separate options for CSS3. If you're in a CSS3 capable browser, you're going to go back to the view source. And there it is. If I Now, I don't hack Internet Explorer. I just make a little tiny style sheet and add a little bit of code and for the most part it just works. So if you go to my website and you go to the web menu and you go to IE CSS3, you're going to find basically a link to conditional comments. And this page is more or less not completed because I've been porting my content from the old version of my website. So anyway, um, yeah, all you're doing is in a conditional comment is using an HTML comment. And only our explorer is going to look at that. Every other browser is going to ignore it. That means the main style sheet right there is completely standards compliant. This fixes that. So let's say this sidebar, I'm gonna, I'm, it's pure CSS, so it doesn't have a set width, it has a percentage width. But let's say, to make it nice and easy, it has a 200 pixel width. And that Internet Explorer keeps rendering it as 202. So instead of setting the width to 200, I would just set the width to 198. And then it would add the borders to the total width, or whatever, or however it's doing it, and boom. So you just gotta play with it and tweak it. You don't have to hack it. Only amateurs are hacking their standards compliance style sheet to do that. Okay? This is pure liquid CSS. Okay? Except for the prompts. I mean, that's understandable. Alright? So anyway. Internet Explorer. Where we you've seen where we've been, where are we going? Microsoft doesn't do itself justice by not posting everything on it. It doesn't post anything on its blog, but it, they are doing stuff. Um, please don't scream at the IE team. They work for Microsoft. They aren't specifically the ones saying, hey, let's not update the browser. Okay. Um, if you've done enough reading, you can know that there are people who work inside Microsoft, work on HTML and CSS, and like, I can't stand working with Internet Explorer. Their own people don't like it. Okay. I'm sure Chris Wilson would would love to just you know work on it you know to the extent to really get up to the school. He's not the big boss, you know. He's the organizer, but he's work underneath Bill Gates and wh whoever else they, they have at their their great hierarchy. Okay, but don't give them crap. Um. So anyway, Chris Wilson has. I've seen a video. I've seen some other. I read a lot. Uh, besides the IE blog, and we're getting a new rendering engine. It's coming. Trust me. Um, now, I don't know where I know I know we're getting a third um, rendering mode. So we have right now we have Quirks mode, which is Microsoft's best guess because there are flaws in the W3C standards. For example, uh, browsers will tab to an overflow divisible element and give it focus so you can up down on the key and scroll the content with your keyboard. Uh, W3C does not actually actively permit the tab index attribute on divisible elements. A bug in the W3C standards. Plain and simple. Not intended behavior. So I have to actually cloak my website to validate. Otherwise people would see that and be like, that's not valid code but they wouldn't understand that I'm making up for a bug in, in there. So quirks mode, which I leave the XML declaration in an Explorer 6 in previous, 
is left there intentionally because the quirks mode is actually Microsoft's smart way of handling the bugs and the holes and the, and the gaps in, in the W3 specifications. We're getting a new rendering engine. It's not going to be everything, but it's going to be a lot more than what we have. And uh, that's my time limit here. So um, thanks for watching. And uh, I'm going to do a quick thanks to RacerBio9. I've got Counter-Strike download. I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching.